Cry our beloved country. Cry our beloved Soweto. Cry our beloved Lokshins within South Africa. Yet again, an eight-year-old child had passed on from allegedly consuming biscuits from his puzzle shop owned by a non-South African person. It is said that this child consumed the biscuits, fell ill, was in hospital, and subsequently died from consuming these biscuits. Condolences to the family in De Kloof yet again. Condolences to the community at large and condolences to the residents at large. Another condolences again. <clears throat> South Africa, we are on our own. Mdomnyama, we are on our own. Trust me. Why do I say this? Waking up to news that a community leader who was protecting and making sure that plaza shops are closed has been gunned down. Yes, this community leader, Mr. Zwane, who was 50 years old, is said to have been protecting his community, making sure that the spaza shops are closed, and he was very vocal about making sure that spazas are closed. He did not have any ammunition. He did not fight with violence. He was just proactive, being vocal, and making sure that the shops are closed. Apparently, when he was working, walking home, he was followed by somebody dressed in all black who shot him three times at close range. South Africa, we are on our own. Yes, the police confirmed that an inquest, a murder docket has been opened. But let me ask this thing. If it was a South African citizen who has gunned down somebody, or I'm not assuming and I'm not speculating that it's a non-South African citizen that has killed this man, but when you read the newspapers, you are hearing from the community on the ground that they are alleging that it's a non-South African person who killed this community leader because he was very vocal and proactive in making sure that these puzzle shops are not being opened. If it was a South African who had killed this man, would not be arrested by now maybe? We don't know. Today, the 25th of November 2024, marks the start of 16 days of activism towards ending gender-based violence, no violence, for children and women, and men also, and kids at large. My question is, why is our government so silent? Your silence is loud. An eight-year-old child died, a community leader who was vocal about making sure that these puzzle shops has been subsequently gunned down. The question is, am I next? Is Sihlisibisi next? Or other people who are being vocal, using their voices, not weapons, to make sure that Simbula Mech, to make sure that you are opening your eyes to say, Vogamzansi, wake up South Africa. We cannot allow that the Lokshin is so where to is given on a free platter to non-South African citizens. Am I xenophobic? No, I'm not. I am just standing in the gap and making sure that the generations yet unborn do not question us one day and say, why did you remain silent? The question lies again. The GNU government, you are quiet. You are silent. How many more people should die? So should I say, indeed, I'm next. I might be gunned down tomorrow because this man, Mr. Zwane, who has gunned down, is gunned down for being vocal to say enough with puzzle shops. He's gunned down for being proactive and guarding his community. So people who are talking, are they sending a message to us to silence us, to intimidate us? What is our government saying? Let it be known everywhere that those who are vocal like me, who are amplifying our voices against this puzzle shop nightmare, because our children are dying. Now a community member has died. Our lives are on the line. Zanzi, wake up. Vulana Mecho, 16 days of activism. Let's do something. Gender-based violence has happened already. The people in Soweto, the people in Malokshi, they are emotionally abused, which is part of gender-based violence, because they are embroiled in emotional turmoil of not knowing what will happen in their communities tomorrow. What more? A man has just been gunned down. So the question is, 
government, are you serious about gender-based violence and femicide or not? Zanzibar, wake up.